Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your August 2018 general readings. Thank you so much for joining us here today and welcome to any newcomers. Thank you for continuing to follow my YouTube channel and for all your likes, shares and subscribes and always a big thank you to all of my clients out there, both regular and new for continuing to keep me so busy uh, with personal one-on-one -on -one readings. As you can see, my background has changed again. I am doing my annual gypsy thing, traipsing around Europe, Eastern Europe, currently in a little flat in Poland right now. But as most of you know, I work anywhere and everywhere that I go where there's an internet connection, which in the world we live in today is just about everywhere. So uh, onwards and forwards we go. If any of you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me live or recorded, you can get more information and my contact details by uh, going to my YouTube channel's homepage and clicking on the little about button or clicking on the description bar of all the videos I post. You can email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. Uh, I'd be delighted to work with you and set up a personal reading live or recorded. Uh, turnaround time is usually pretty pretty timely. It's, it's usually anywhere from a few days upwards of two or three weeks, uh, but almost always within that period of time we can set something up for you. So if you're interested, send me an email. We'll go from there. You can also find me on the smartphone app Instant Go under Irish Gypsy, and that link is also provided. Uh, that's more uh, quick answers to quick questions. But for the more traditional readings, love and romance, career work and, and finance, uh, compatibility charting, I also do six and 12 month overviews, which take a look at what's coming in your life for the next six or 12 months. Uh, channeled messages from past on loved ones and gift readings as well. All right, let's move right into this. This reading is for the water sign of Cancer, our Cancerians, the crabs for the month of August, 2018. Let's see what's in store for Cancer for August 2018. Make sure to check your rising and your moon sign videos as well if you know them. They can provide additional clarification because general readings, as you know, uh, will resonate uh, and vary in the details and specifics because there's so many of you watching, although the energy and advice always remains the same. All right, Cancer, we begin with the Seven of Swords, followed by the Four of Pentacles. We have the Knight of Pentacles, followed by the Eight of Pentacles. The Two of Wands, followed by the Knight of Swords. And the Wheel of Fortune, followed by the Chariot. Wow, the month wraps up with a bang. And from the bottom of the deck, your overall energy and guidance uh, is the Five of Wands. So Cancer, your overall energy from the bottom of the deck and focus or guidance, uh, we can look at this also as advice, is the Five of Wands. Now the Five of Wands uh, can be a card of conflict or competition, internal conflict, external conflict, or a combination of both of those things. But it's it represents a uh, more petty conflict. You can see that the people in the circle are sparring. They're not using real weapons. They're using practice swords. They're not out to kill each other. So this can often represent minor conflicts or petty squabbles with you or another person or within a group of people, family system, or even at work. Uh, it, it's petty. So it can often, I often get the sense of uh, circular arguments with this card, fighting over the same thing over and over again. Nobody winning, nobody losing, but no clear path and no solution. Kind of a never ending argument or arguing over the same thing or a competitive nature, which, you know, kind of represents a lack of being able to elevate yourself because uh, the nature of the contention and the conflict here is petty, uh, but nobody's willing to compromise, negotiate, kind of prioritize what's the important thing here. Nobody's willing to kind of give an inch. Um, so people keep on fighting and squabbling. It can represent gossip, rumor mongering, office drama and politics, fighting within a family circle or a group of friends uh, as well. And the accompanying advice to this is always 
if you're involved in some kind of drama or conflict with a person or other people, particularly for the month of August 2018, remember that you can either withdraw from this or you can remind everybody, look, we're fighting over something that's relatively unimportant. What's really the main thing? What are we really squabbling over here? What are we really hoping to achieve? What's the priority here? And kind of elevate yourself in this. And if that doesn't work, then you can choose to remove yourself from this. Also as advice for the month of August, you know, you may be more prone to getting involved in or hearing about drama, conflict, or gossip. Uh, be careful with that. Um, this can also be cautionary advice about watching, you know, what you say to people, particularly if you're talking about other people. So uh, just kind of keep an eye on that for uh, August 2018. Um, the Five of Wands is also a card of competition of competitive energy. So for some of you, it may be a competitive month. You may be vying with other people for something uh, as well, not in necessarily in a negative sense either. Now, we begin the month, or in July, I'm recording these at, in the last week of July, we have the Seven of Swords and the Four of Pentacles. This can go a couple of different ways. The Seven of Swords is sometimes referred to as the Thief card. Uh, it can represent actual theft uh, or being exploited, taken advantage of you doing it or having somebody else do it to you. It can represent deceptiveness, slipperiness, deceit, or secrets. Uh, but the thief card often uh, gets a bad rap. It can also represent, um, you know, watching out for yourself uh, as long as you don't harm anybody in the processes, you know, watching out for your own good or doing something in an unorthodox fashion to achieve success for yourself. Uh, again, no judgment here as long as you're not hurting somebody else in the process. It can also represent um, keeping something very close to yourself, maybe being deliberately deceptive or secretive about something. And again, that can be positive or negative. Um, and I feel like for a lot of you, there's some kind of secret or some kind of something you're holding on to. You're not telling other people uh, and you're holding on to it because the Seven of Swords is clarified by the Four of Pentacles, uh, sometimes called the Miser card. Uh, in dollars and cents and finances, this can represent uh, holding on to your money, being very tight with your money, holding on to everything that you have for fear of losing it. I, I sometimes see this come up when somebody has lost a lot in the past or has had a lot taken away from them. And so they're, they hold on very tightly to what they have because they're afraid to let go of it or they're afraid of losing something else. In an emotional uh, relationship sense or in an emotional sense, this can represent that you may have been hurt in the past and you're holding on very tight. It can represent being, you know, kind of guarded, uh, protective, maybe a little defensive or a little closed off and guarded. Some of you, this combination of energy, the Seven of Swords and the Four of Pentacles, some of you may be, I feel like some of you are holding on to a secret of some kind. Um, or there's something that you're not revealing or telling other people. Uh, a secret uh, in my own definition, a secret is information or knowledge that's being actively concealed. That's the nature of a secret. So I feel like some of you are doing that for better, for worse. It's going to vary depending on who's watching this. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. You're holding on to something. You're not telling, revealing something. I do see some offers and opportunities coming in here for partnership or work or project or a promotion of some kind. It may be that you're trying to make up your mind about that. And in the meanwhile, you're not talking to other people about it. You're just kind of turning things over in yourself. That's going to be the case for some of you. Some of you, um, the nature of whatever this conflict is, and for some of you that are holding on to something and not talking or revealing for the time being, uh, it could be that you're, you're not talking about some kind of conflict that's going on. And for, I think, just a handful of you, I'm getting kind of a specific message that you have an ongoing conflict or there's some kind of ongoing conflict with another individual, could be a group of people, but a, at least another individual like there's some kind of conflictive drama or conflict going on with you and another person. And it has been going on for a little while, um, but you're kind of keeping that to yourself and you're not talking about that. Why? I'm not sure. Cautionary advice for those of you who are actively keeping a secret, particularly if this is a secret that has to do with a conflict or drama and it's upsetting you, I can understand trying to think about it and contemplate and try and resolve it and figure out what the best way to do it is. But when we hold on to secrets too long, especially if it's something that's really bothering us, they can be more difficult to talk about as time goes on and nothing gets resolved. So just kind of be aware of that. <coughs> 
some of you, I feel like you have an offer or opportunity in front of you or will be having it in front of you in the month of August. And that is one of the things you're going to be keeping to yourself, whether or not you're going to take advantage of this offer or opportunity, act upon it. Um, or if you are acting upon it for the time being, you're keeping, you're kind of playing your cards close to your chest. You're keeping that to yourself because next we have the Knight of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. Knights usually represent offers, opportunities, because they're the bringers, the deliverers of the tarot. They were sent out on missions and quests to achieve results and bring those results back, hence representing offers or opportunities. They also represent the speed at which a situation moves. Out of all four of the knights, even though all four of them are rather fast moving because they're knights, they're known for being spontaneous and impulsive. Out of all four of the knights, the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest because he's governed by earth energy. Uh, so he's one foot in front of the other, cover all the details, but he will get the job done from beginning to end, even though he's slower than his, you know, uh, uh, air, fire, and water counterpart knights. Um, and it represents a lot of abundance. I often see this card come up. This, this represents an offer or opportunity that's tangible in nature because it's earth energy pentacles. And pentacles usually manifest in tangible ways in our life, things like money, finance, property, job, resources, assets, etc. I often see this come up for a job offer or an opportunity that falls on, you know, on your career path or under the work umbrella. It could be a job offer itself. It could be the offer of a partnership. It could be, you know, um, the offer of a promotion, which would bring in, you know, extra money, but would also uh, require extra responsibility and commitment. Um, hence with the partnership as well. And I think for a lot of you, it has something to do with whatever it is you do for work or you invest your time in because the Knight of Pentacles is clarified by the Eight of Pentacles, which is the work card, the artisanship card. It speaks about working hard, working a lot, maybe working repetitively, maybe burning the candle at both ends a little bit because you, you have a goal and you're slowly but steadily building up a solid, stable foundation for yourself, which is why you're you're investing all of this hard work, the worker be card, I call it. So I think for a lot of you, there is, and by work, let me clarify, by work, work can mean a variety of different things. It can mean the conventional job that you leave your home and clock in and out of every day. It can represent your own business. It can represent working from home. It can represent being a homemaker and taking care of your home or your family. Even if you're retired, it just represents whatever efforts you put in your day-to-day -day life that support your day-to-day -day life or may maybe uh, significant or major projects that you're putting yourself into if it's not a conventional job. So it looks like there's an offer or opportunity in front of you that's tangible in nature. It looks like it has very good potential. Uh, I think some of you may be t uh, considering taking this. Uh, you may be in the beginning of taking advantage of this. Uh, you may be thinking of leaving one job for another, but again, for a lot of you, whatever this offer or opportunity is, and I feel like you're thinking down the road while you're considering this and trying to do some research and gather more information about it and ask yourself if this is something you really want or how you're going to go about doing this. And again, I feel like for the majority, if not all of the month of August, I feel like a lot of you are keeping this to yourself. Uh, regardless of the nature and the specifics and details of it, because in a general reading, it's going to vary. I feel like, you know, for some of you, it may be a job offer, or you might be leaving a steady job to start your own business or a partner with somebody else, or maybe there's a promotion and you're not sure if you want to take it or not, because, you know, it might mean more extended work or more, you know, the opportunity looks good, but it may require more work, more dedication, more commitment. Um, and so for some of you that are going to be contemplating this and doing more research and spending some time thinking about whether you're going to take it and whether it, it's what you really want long term looking down the road, I feel like you're being, you're keeping it to yourself for the most part and kind of not talking about it. Um, but I think that you're thinking about it during the month of August 2018. We, we also next to that have the Two of Wands and the Knight of Swords. So another knight here. This is in for this night is, is the Knight of Swords. Swords is air energy and it's mental, cerebral, intellectual energy. It's all about what goes on up in here. Perspectives, belief systems, which affect the way that we see, relate and communicate to the world. Truth, education, illumination, learning, higher education everything that goes on up in our heads here. So this night is bringing and delivering information, news, um, uh, reality. He sometimes comes across as a bit cold or dispassionate. He doesn't necessarily mean to be. He's just all about, these are the facts. This is reality. This is it. A, B, C, D. Okay, I've delivered the information. I'm out of here. 
Uh, sometimes it's called the inconvenient truth card because it can represent that this is the reality of what it is, devoid of emotion. So, you know, as the saying goes, it is what it is, which can sometimes be a little, you know, like the cold, hard truth kind of card. It can sometimes have that energy too. But in this particular case, because it's clarifying the two of wands, which is about trying to make up your mind which road you want to take or a choice that you need to make. Uh, uh, and the key to choosing the right, uh, the appropriate path in the two of wands is to think long term. It's not to make the decision based on maybe what might look good right in front of you right now, but rather, okay, do I take the path to the left? Do I take the path to the right? The key is in looking down the road. What am I ultimately aiming for here? What is my big picture goal? What's my ultimate goal here? And once you have that set, then it makes the path of getting there much more clear. Uh, for example, it's kind of hard to pack or plan for a journey that has no destination because how do you know which path to take? How do you know what plans to make? So this is about looking down the road, figuring out where you want to be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And once you have that set, then it actually makes the decision you need to make now, i.e. which path to start on, a little easier and a little more clear to see. So I feel like a lot of you are gathering more information, you're thinking about it, you're doing some research, or you're considering what this extra investment of time and energy may cost you. Is it worth the efforts? Does it, is it going to get me closer to or help me reach my long-term goals? And again, I feel like a lot of you are just kind of not really talking too much about it. For some of you, it could be because again, I feel like this is in work, career, you know, the project or work part of your life, or, you know, it, it could be a partnership or, or even an artistic or creative endeavor. Some of the conflict, some of you may be experiencing conflict on a current career path or in a current maybe work atmosphere and you are considering leaving because of that conflict and drama and you're keeping that to yourself as well. Um, kind of trying to figure out what's best for you long term is kind of one of the fundamental threads for August 2018. Now at or towards the end of August 2018, we have a marvelous combination of cards, really powerful, two major arcana cards, the Wheel of Fortune and the Chariot. The Wheel of Fortune in the upright implies a stroke of good luck, of good fortune, the wheel turning in your favor, divine timing and orchestration, which we have no control over coming in you know, good luck, good fortune. Uh, in the upright position, it can also represent in business dealings, contracts, negotiations, things working in your favor, things coming together in the right way, in the right manner, at the right time, uh, divine timing and orchestration. What clarifies it is the chariot, which is one of, if not the most powerful major arcana success card in the tarot. It talks about success that comes from perseverance, determination, being very focused on your goals, being uh, ambitious and driven, uh, setting your goals, setting all the steps you need to accomplish that goal, starting, not stopping, not slowing down, not letting anything uh, make you lose your momentum, not letting anything get in your way, doing everything that you can uh, to manifest whatever your dream, your goal is, and not stopping until you succeed. It's winning by sheer virtue of the fact that you refuse to give up. Cautionary advice with the chariot, sometimes it can come up when someone is maybe overly ambitious or overly driven. Um, again, there's this, for some of you, competitive nature. It could be that, you know, there may be something coming up in the work environment or work atmosphere that a lot of people are wanting or hoping for or vying for a position or a project or something. And you may be quite ambitious and quite driven and you're really working on getting it for yourself, which is what you're keeping to yourself. Again, this could be positive or negative. The, the cautionary advice to, you know, uh, cards like the chariot is it's wonderful to be focused and goal driven uh, and ambitious. Uh, but just make sure you don't do it to your own detriment or, you know, deliberately step on other people um, kind of on the road to getting there. I don't think a lot of you really have that to worry about because it appears to be, you know, cradled and supported and orchestrated by uh, the divine. So a very, very powerful way to wrap up uh, the month. I feel like whatever it is, uh, Cancer, that you spend the majority of the month contemplating, I feel like a lot of you are going to be moving ahead with whatever it is in a really powerful, successful way um, that is supported and, and orchestrated uh, by God's spirit, your angels and guides um, in a very successful way. It's a beautiful spread. There's a lot of pentacles energy here. There's a lot of uh, 
Oh, I say a lot. You have three. But a lot of the colors are kind of jumping out at me. A lot of lush, verdant greens and golds. And there's, there's just a sense of potential prosperity here. So kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about this opportunity, even though, though it looks like a fair amount of work and investment, it definitely looks like it has the potential to pay off in a pretty big way uh, if you're willing to risk it and to step out on that path. So, Cancer, that pretty much wraps up your August 2018 general readings. I hope you have enjoyed it, that you found it helpful and useful. Again, if any of you would like a more personal one-on-one -on -one reading, uh, please feel free to email me directly at maggie the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to work with you. Uh, you can find more information and my contact details by clicking on the description bar of every video I post or clicking on the little about button you'll find on my YouTube channel's homepage. Uh, for quick answers to quick questions, you can also find me on the smartphone app Instant Go under Irish Gypsy. And that link is also provided. I will see you all in a couple of weeks, Cancer, for the August 2018 mid-month general readings. And until then, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. Take care, Cancer, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.